Um, I'm going to speak about this in the context of uh, work in a, um, a shared sort of public environment in an office or similar type of space uh, with others, and especially in environments and in contexts where uh, most of those around you or with you are not necessarily believers, they're not necessarily Muslim, uh, and so the various challenges that uh, are presented. Okay, so I'll, I'll offer a few uh, reflections on this topic. And even if um, uh, that's not the specific environment uh, that you find yourself in, hopefully there'll be some things within here or principles that apply also to other situations, to different situations, okay? So first things first, uh, as I think I may have uh, said towards, uh, in, in one of the previous sessions, or I generally make the point, that it's very important that the first thing we understand is that wherever we are, in whichever environment we're talking about, the um, the ability to pray uh, and the uh, the ability to do so in, you know, in a punctual way and in a proper way uh, is 95% an issue of our own determination and mindset within ourselves. So oftentimes we think about the external factors, you know, praying in a vehicle, praying in, in, in an office, praying in a, you know, out and about when I'm out and about in the, in, in the park, for example, or shopping or here, there, wherever, right? Whatever the situation is, we will find ourselves in all sorts of different external environments. But the main determinant or the main thing that's going to make a difference as to whether you actually offer your prayers on time or not, wherever you find yourself, the main thing is your own mindset, your own willingness, your own determination. Okay. So that's the first things first to make, make sure that that's the case. So you have to have a genuine desire and a will that I want to be able to offer my prayers on time and I want to do them properly, regardless of where I find myself and therefore including the work environment as well. So that's the first thing. Uh, second thing, one of the things I talk about in the Transform My Prayer program, which uh, hopefully you will uh, recall if you have, especially if you've been recently doing this uh, in, in some of the opening sort of sections, is the issue of or the importance of being open uh, and confident okay, with, with others. So oftentimes I've come across situations where people simply don't have the confidence to let other people know around them that, that regular prayer is something that they are committed to and that they want to do. And so because they don't feel that confidence, they feel shy of either uh, saying that or admitting that, you know, as if it's some sort of a you know, crime or a mistake. Then because of this, they never open up. They never say they never say anything. And the longer that goes on, the harder it becomes, because then it's like, you know, well, why would I mention it later on? I never mentioned it earlier kind of thing. You know, uh, and in some work environments, depending, especially if it's large offices, potentially, you know, uh, you, you will get um, uh, you will get different sort of Muslims or believers who are uh, who then project very different uh, sort of uh, attitudes towards the prayer. Some very committed and clear and open and confident and others um, and others very much kind of, you know, quiet and, and not mentioning it at all uh, and, 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 and not doing it because they just almost feel frozen. Right. In terms of the um, in terms of the situation. Okay, they're lacking the confidence. Now, uh, one when one does have the confidence to, uh, you know, to to want to be able to pray, then I think it is important to be then open. So another situation is a person is praying, but they can't, but no one knows, right? They're sort of stealing away, right? They're they're going away from the desk, from the, they're taking the time out, whatever have you, all right? And they're they're going off and doing it, but in their immediate kind of environment, their immediate team or whoever they work with, no one really knows because again, they don't necessarily want to say it. Now, at certain points in time, that becomes can become kind of difficult because obviously, say, in certain periods of time when the days are short and if you're leaving multiple times, potentially during the uh, during the day uh, to offer your prayers, uh, then it can become a, uh, a sort of, um, uh, you know, something that is obvious, that is clear to others, but it's not exactly clear what is going on. So, again, you, why leave the uncertainty? Why not just simply share it or mention it? So I recommend to people that once they, uh, you know, at the start, especially at the start of new jobs, ideally, right, when you start and once you've started a new job, then you would speak to the relevant people, right? And you're not trying to do this in a way of, um, you know, you're, uh, sort of a, a, some, you know, like a, sort of a, a major, uh, like a major announcement or anything, or, uh, or 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 to prove a point, right, or anything else. Nor uh, are you seeking permission as such or being apologetic about it. You're simply saying that this is what need this is what this is what I do, um, and I'll be taking some time out to do that. Okay, uh, so so that's an an important thing just to let people know what you're doing is just letting them know. You're not necessarily seeking permission. Depends on the situation, obviously, and depends on the dynamics of the particular environment. Um, but that's not so much the issue, right? You're simply just letting them know that it's something I, uh, uh, you know, I, I do, I need to do, and this is how it works. There are various windows within that. You know, there's some flexibility. And obviously the fact that you know you'll work things around your responsibilities, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So that's the that's the kind of um 
letting people know that I think is useful and important. So being confident about that is a, is a is an important thing. So that's the uh, that part, and then it comes down to the actual space itself. Now, many places nowadays, you know, they have a space which is uh, explicitly a place for a prayer room or a multi faith room, as it's often called, right? And other places won't have a specific place. Now, if there isn't one, then again, depending on the nature of the firm, the company, whatever it is, you speak to the relevant people. It could be there could be a human resources department, uh, there could be you know your immediate manager or their manager, for example, or the the person who's leading, all right, and say that. Um, uh, uh, and say that yes, like this is a this is a uh, and, and basically look to ha have the discussion to see if there is an appropriate space that can be used, right? Now, one thing is important to realize is that it is not necessary as a condition of salah, right, for us to have total privacy, right? So whilst we may find that ideal, it's certainly not necessary by any means, right? It's just become something which is ingrained within us uh, psychologically nowadays. That when we pray, you know, no one who doesn't pray should see us, right? Uh, so obviously our mosques are walled and closed for obvious reasons, uh, or we pray in our homes, uh, or we look to pray in complete seclusion, okay, when we are out and about. But that is not necessarily have to be the case. And of course, as we know, uh, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to lead his companions in prayer, it was open, right? Everybody could see what was going on, right? Um, and the, the unbelievers could see what was going on. So everybody could... Uh, you know, could notice and observe. Um, even at that time, there wasn't even a, a screen, physical barrier, even between men and women, right? There was men would line up and women would line up behind them. But the point being, it was quite an open sort of affair, if you like. Um, so whilst we may prefer that, uh, it doesn't, you know, that it's not necessary. Now, it may be the case that sometimes you have a halfway situation. There may be a room where, for example, there is like glass walls, right? Or partly covered walls and partly, you know, um, uh, sort of transparent sort of material glass or whatever it might be. Uh, or maybe there's normal walls, but then the door has like a glass panel within it. And so you might, if someone's passing by, they could see, for example, All right? Sometimes there may not be a specific room, but there might be some sort of meeting room, okay, that you look to use and someone might come in. Now, the issue is, is that you need to be prepared in your mind to that or understand that you're not doing anything uh, wrong you're not you might be doing something that others may find strange or they have not experienced before or not seen before but if you can be the person whose actions or whose demonstration of the prayer or whose whose prayer who's doing the prayer becomes the reason why somebody else start you know can learn and understand and start to observe this practice isn't that a good thing isn't that then you fulfilling your role as an ambassador okay for uh, for the faith uh, and for what belief in God entails, uh, to be a to be a representative and ambassador for it. So part and parcel of your function and your role as a believer is that. And so it's very important to have that self confidence, right? To and and because I think a lot of what affects people, right, is uh, is the um, uh, is, is this kind of a, uh, something of an inferiority complex, basically, you know. Um, and so I think that I, I think that uh, whilst it's understandable to a certain degree, okay, why we might wish for that privacy, et cetera, et cetera, I think we should try to challenge those that behave and those assumptions within ourselves, uh, and we should be prepared for the possibility or the fact of, uh, you know, of of public prayer but where where necessary or prayer that might may be observed by some people, okay, uh, depending again on the scenario, the setup, et cetera. So that's something which I think is important to uh, to, to to bear in mind. I mean, even um, some of you might uh, you know be aware that uh, some some months ago or some time back, uh, my oldest daughter started to uh, you know pray in school. I shared it on the Telegram group some time back. So you know, so those of you who were there, you might have seen that. And um, uh, and after some back and forth with the school, the the, the main space that they uh, looked to sort of um, provide was not a was not a completely secluded space. But I thought that that was that would be that would be quite a good thing. So for that, for my daughter to be in a place which is relatively kind of, you know, um, away from, if you like, the main area is actually an outdoor covered outdoor space, uh, you know, which they said that she could use during the lunch break, for example. And there was a sort of a backup space indoors if for weather reasons or other reasons, um, uh, you know, the, the, the kids wouldn't be uh, outside or playing outside. So it, so it's sort of like a, a, a covered sort of hut or shed type thing, but open, open sort of no walls basically right just just posts and then like a, a roof of some sort and some sitting area and some open space but it was adjacent to the main playground 
okay, with some sort of, um, you know, uh, with some barrier or some cover between the two, but basically it was quite visible, you know? Um, so I thought, okay, that's quite a good thing actually, because then now my daughter will be doing that. And then the, uh, the, the, the other children in the school will observe, they'll see, they'll start to see, and she will develop a sort of confidence to be able to just do, and, and, and prayer will become something natural that she will do it. And others may or may not observe, but basically who cares, right? <laughs> like you're doing your thing. Now, remember also, uh, one point I often make in regards to this issue is the fact that when you do your salah, uh, then uh, you are um, you are not the odd one out. You are the one that actually is aligning with everything else in the universe, right? The entire universe is in salah. The entire universe is in salah, is in tasbih, okay, is in glorification and submission to the Almighty, okay? Um, and so anybody who isn't doing that, the issue really is, is anybody who isn't doing that, they're the ones who are missing their appointments. Everybody's invited to stand and worship God in those times, right? So anybody who's not doing that, well, they're missing their appointments with God. If anything, you should have a concern for them, not be concerned by the fact that they're observing you. Do you see? And similar, by the way, applies to the issue of wudu as well, right? Uh, wudu at work is something where often where there's a lot of questions around. And, uh, and, and again, it might not just be a work thing, but generally speaking, like we should be able to do wudu openly wherever we have to do it. We don't have to look for a private toilet, a disabled toilet. We don't have to look for these things. There is water, there is a sink or whatever it is. You just do your wudu. Um, now, clearly there are kind of uh, provisions or things that can facilitate or make it easy in terms of, you know, wiping socks, et cetera, uh, which and obviously feet and washing feet and everything is the most difficult uh, aspect of the wudu in those kinds of environments. Um, and so you can do your wudu before you uh, leave uh, for, for, you know, for leave that your house before you go out in the morning. Uh, do your wudu, make sure you're wearing and then wear some socks in the state of wudu. And then after that, you can simply wipe your socks okay, throughout the day uh, to do your to do your wudu. Um, yeah. So I think this is the thing. So one and one last couple of uh, one or two points I'll, I'll mention is that. Um, uh, yeah. So one thing is, is that. You need to also have a degree of uh, flexibility uh, and also a degree of balance. Okay, so um, if, for example, you know, either on a particular day or generally speaking, it is a stressful work environment. It's a busy work environment. There's a lot of dependency. Okay? There's a lot of dependency on uh, on your you and your role happening in a certain way. You know, for others in your team or those who are around you, etc. You want to uh, make sure that, or you want to try your best to make sure that your you're, you're doing your salah doesn't become the reason that, or a, perce a perceived reason by others as to why things are now, for example, you know, going wrong or not happening as they should happen. You understand? So if you need to make up for the time to make sure things happen and as they should have happened, then make sure that you do what you need to do to make, make it happen. So don't let complement your doing your prayer with excellence in your work. All right. So then so these two things come like come across together. And uh, you project a positive image, both in terms of the excellence and the professionalism with which you do what you do. You show good character, you show honesty, you show integrity, professionalism, care, diligence, all of the co co good qualities that you should be showing as part and parcel of any kind of work that you do, right? And, and that commitment and everything else. And display those and, and then and, and simultaneously be dis disciplined with regards to your prayers. So these two things coming together okay, is the best way of making sure that... Um, you know, uh, well, you're doing justice basically to everything that, you know, everything has its place and you need to do justice to everything that uh, that is your responsibility. And finally, I would just say um, that uh, where possible, try to encourage and pray together with other believers in the same workplace where you can. So sometimes, for example, you may, uh, there may, and in some places this is very well organized in other places it's less so, depends again on the environment and, and the number of uh, Muslims and, you know, in the environment, et cetera, et cetera. So these things can vary. But where you can try to encourage others, pray with others and just say, look, you know, and, and try to try to organize and congregate and bring people together as much as you can, as much as you can. So especially for the Dhuhr prayer, which is kind of typically aligned with lunchtime, you know, you can suggest a, you, a particular time where if there is a space you meet together to go and pray in such and such a space. All right. Um, so. Uh, so I think this 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 is important and it can create a good environment and give people the confidence. And you'll be surprised sometimes if you're the brave one who initiates the prayer in a workplace for the first time, and there are other other believers who up until now they weren't doing their prayers, simply the fact that your example will often encourage people. That's all other people need sometimes. Okay. That's all other people need. All other people need is your example, and they they too will be encouraged. You know, few people tend to be the initiators, people who are proactive. 
but many people are happy to follow okay an example once an example has been set you see and so that's a it's a great thing to be the initiator to be the one who is proactive